Well, hello, ladies, gentlemen, children, monkeys of all ages. Welcome back to the circus and welcome to a studio in flux. <laughs> so, uh, working on lighting and uh, trying to address that, and then I need to address sound. So, let me know if there's any issue with uh, horrible lighting or sound uh, down in the comments, and I'll try to. To handle it but I will probably notice in editing if there's anything too bad and you'll never see this anyway uh, but for now wow this is the latest Finch this is the Finch Chernobyl ant let me give you a quick flyby here oh yeah look at that uh, thank you to Finch knives thank you to Spencer and Steve over there for putting these into the pass around group so I can check them out for you guys and uh, tell you what I think about them. Uh, without any any agenda, they don't uh, they don't require us to love their knives or anything like that. So not going on here. But let's talk about this. First off, let's give you, you know, Uh, it's a box with a couple stickers, a band-aid, and a warranty card. I hate wrestling with packaging. Um, I just, hands are kind of slick right now. But um, this is the latest Finch in a recent string of Finches. And this one, uh, I, I like. Uh, this one is up there, probably my top two. If I could blend this and the halo that I had recently, basically if I could give the halo an uncoated blade, I would really, really love the halo. It was super smooth. It is the typical Finch, high quality in terms of the fit and finish, um, a variety of materials or colorways usually in most of their designs the coated blade on the halo that there was no uncoated option that was the kind of killer for that one but uh, if they do an uncoated version later on uh, I think I like the overall ergos and stuff on that one more but the the looks of this the sod buster sort of feel just I mean it looks like a skinnied up halo uh, it looks more like a true sod buster but they both sort of have that feel so, um, a Chernobyl ant, if you didn't know, is the name of a fly fishing lure. So, a fly fishing fly is a Chernobyl ant. It is uh, one of those that in certain parts of the country is kind of a go-to fly at certain times of the year. So, that is what this is named after. And uh, sort of why they chose some of the materials for the handles they did, I think. But, um, this is uh, just... The, the handle is right at the right size for my hands. So um, keeping everything fairly packed in there, I am right at, right at where I can go on this handle without having to throw a pinky back behind it and go to three fingers on, which you can do. So if your fingers are a little bit bigger than mine or if you wanna spread your sausages out on the, the handle, you can absolutely throw a pinky back behind there and have a good purchase to keep everything kinda push that direction. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there is, uh, let's, let's start with some of the things I don't like. Let's just get that out of the way. I don't like that there is so much of this writing on the blade. Um, the blade steel, the name of the, the model. I mean, I get, I wish they would just put an, ah, uh, watch it. <laughs> I wish they would just put like the Finch F up here and uh, maybe, maybe take the, badge off of some of these or like Gary said over at the last ranger um, take this and put it back down here if you're not going to give us a bi-directional pocket clip option um, flip it this way and put the badge down here or I think just better put this put this logo uh, right here instead of Finch and then over here, if you wanted to put the, the name or something, um, instead of giving us at least one sterile side of the blade, um, 
that would be acceptable. That's just a lot of a lot of text on the blade, a lot of billboarding that I honestly don't think is necessary, and I think people would appreciate not having. So uh, stainless steel liners, completely unmilled, and this thing still comes in at 2.6. In fact, I measured this one. I, I thought, man, this is a bit of a chunk. Looked it up. They say 2.6. It was 2.59. So they are spot on there. Now some of the other um, some of the other measurements were a little bit off on, but they're uh, rounding. So. I will uh, give them a bit of a pass, but let's get this up in here. So overall length of exactly seven inches. So they're spot on there. Where I have a difference is the blade length is just over three inches. That's important in some areas. So if you say a three inch blade, it probably needs to be three inch or just below. This one comes in at about three and an eighth, maybe just under that. So just over three inches back to the front of that handle scale. Which means in pocket, they claim is four inches, and I am coming up with about three and seven eighths, which is just right for having an extra eighth on the blade. Um, they say it's a half inch wide, and this thing is a chunk across the back, so I would believe that. Uh, it gives you a great purchase for the spot to put your thumb, which there is a little bit of jumping there. So um, overall, if you if you needed to kind of really lay into something with this, some cardboard or whatever it is you're working on, uh, I think you could do so without much fear of, you know, as long as your hands aren't sweaty or something silly, I think you could do that without uh, a fear of, you know, losing your grip and ending up up here somewhere but uh a good little knife um just we're still struggling with ergos me and finch seem to have a, a problem with ergos and the halo fitting my hand so well but only having a coated blade that <laughs> we might already have a halo here if that were the case so, some other knives I have that are in a comparable size range here. The Sincut Scepter is exactly the same length. This one coming in just under $40, 9CR18 MOV steel and some of the world's worst micarta. A great pocket clip. Um, just, uh, uh, I mean, this one is a really, really good design. Um, some better materials, and there are other handle options. I think G10, I'm not sure what else, but I know there is G10 option. Most of these are not gonna have a wood option, but uh, as we work our way up in price, I will let you know if they do. But the Sincut Scepter at 40 bucks-ish, um, not a bad choice for something in that small kind of professional category. Now, one of my favorites, and the one that reminds me a lot of this blade shape, uh, the Beyond DDC Urus is right at the same length, maybe just a hair longer. Some of my favorite micarta, um, a, a blade shape I like maybe just a little bit more even, but I really like the blade shape on both of these. Um, $52, you are right at half the price of this pretty much. Uh, this coming in at $109 in this. Uh, you can also get a micarta in this as well. Uh, and a Jig G10 that is really hard to find, a red Jig G10. And then there is a glow-in-the-dark resin version of this. It looks kind of like a gray and silver Kiranite with a red streak through it. That glows in the dark. If half, if you only have half the budget, something in the $50 range rather than the $100 range, um, maybe the Beyond DC Urus is something you take a look at. But uh, both of these are you're going to find are uh, very much fill the same slot in my rotation. Mm -hmm. Oh, knife splint. Now this one, smaller grip area. Yet you do have yet a, a you know a bit of a cheater area up here, but my finger gets right up on that blade, so I tend to use it as a three finger knife. And uh, if you really love a clip point blade, or you spend a lot of time out here in this grip, this one may still work for you, even if you have bigger hands. But uh, multiple deployment options: the slot, uh, the Mohawk front flipper that I suck at um, <laughs> uh, a little bit more fidgety and modern but you get kind of that uh, 
pocket Bowie vibe. 60 to $70 comes in multiple colorways, different handle materials and colors, a coated or uncoated blade. Bowler N690 on this one versus the 14C28N of that one and the Urus. You know, one of my favorites. Uh, maybe the nicest steel we've seen so far. So $85 on the Kaiser Original, infinitely fidgety, horrible pocket clip. <laughs> uh, Finch is just uh, way more classy, um, uh, much more professional, I think. Um, if you're a big fan of aluminum scales, you're probably going to be up here. If uh, you like the traditional look a bit more, you're probably going to stay here. But $85, a lot fidgety, and um, a great steal. And at the end of the day, um, we'll compare it to the Harvester. So you're stepping up to about 135 I believe this one is. Uh, Coca Bola wood instead of the iron wood. I really like the iron wood a lot more. Um, this ironwood is absolutely gorgeous. I am not a huge fan of Cocobolo. It's a little on the dark side. I like the, the, the warmth of the ironwood. 154 CM here as well. Same as on the Kaiser Original over there. And at the end of the day, um, a very useful blade shape. I carried these together for the last couple days that I had this. But I need to get this out the door to the next reviewer. So um, this one is staying here and that one is moving on. And then at the end of the day, because this is what I was carrying today, a little bit bigger, but this is about the biggest knife that will fill that smaller folder, kind of a thin executive sort of carry for me is the Terzuola CTF a great folder uh a bit of a deceptively this thing is a beast the way it's ground and the thickness of the blade stock um makes this thing a beast and honestly uh this is not the thinnest blade stock out there if that's an important thing to you but they have a nice grind on it so this thing is going to be uh i think deceptively just uh, a good worker um, for as small as it is. So if you needed to put it into, uh, press it into a little bit uh, more of a difficult situation than you might normally, I think this one will still take it. The CTF definitely will. That spear point and the, the, the stoutness of that tip. But this one comes in at about 120 bucks. So now for S35VN G10, um, honestly not the greatest G10 in the world. Peel ply and um, kind of angular around the edges, but not uncomfortable. I mean, it doesn't hurt or anything like that. It's just uh, you're paying a little bit more for a step down in materials except for that blade steel. So you're trading out better blade steel for uh, a reduction in uh, materials and comfort here. So 120 bucks for drop. Uh, great knife, great knife, great knife, great knife, great knife, great knife. None of them are perfect, not a single one. I could sit down and shred every single one of these knives, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I try and tell you uh, the things I notice that might be wrong or might irritate you if you bought this knife. I don't want to recommend a knife to you that I wouldn't buy. Uh, I'd frequently tell you if this is your aesthetic, maybe you go check it out. I can tell you the qualities there. This one is a lot me. So uh, this one I absolutely will recommend with the caveat that you do pay a little bit more for Finch. You're paying for a, the, the QC. You're paying for a bit of an upgrade in the fit and finish of, of that knife. And if that isn't something that, that you're willing to pay for, then this may not be the value you're looking for. One of these others may be, but um, this one is, is right there. You're, you're right over that hundred dollar mark. And I still think this is a great knife 
at that price. So uh, I may even pay the upgraded, uh, you know, t extra 20 bucks to get the glow in the dark one because I love glow in the dark. But that's really all I've got for you on this one. I've babbled on long enough. I need to get this into editing and uh, maybe I just don't edit it. But that's it for now. So until I see you again, and I do hope I see you again, stay well, be kind, do good. That's it. This is Grumpy. I'm out.